So the All Blacks have their final match of the Rugby Championship this weekend. And there are a lot of questions about what kind of lineup we're going to see from Scott Robertson. But in this video, I'm going to be giving my All Blacks XV that I would love to see for this final match. Now, quick disclaimer, this is not what they're going to do. I've gone with quite a few changes and I do feel like there will still be some similarities compared to the first match up against Australia. But for New Zealand, something still isn't quite working, especially in that last 20 minutes. So hopefully this lineup could possibly change that. But starting with the front row, for my All Blacks 15, I've gone number one to Mighty Williams, number two, Asafa Amor, and number three, Pasilio Tosi. So that would be three changes compared to what we saw last week up against the Australians. To Mighty Williams, I do almost think he should have started the last game ahead of Ethan Groot and then eased De Groot back in off the bench in the second half. So to Mighty Williams, absolute man mountain alongside two other powerhouses and a sufferer more as well as Pasilio Tosi. Now, I could also see them going with George Bell off the bench for this contest if they were going experimental. The last thing you want now though is an injury to Cody Taylor, which is why I've taken him out of the side. No one else has really had sufficient minutes in that All Blacks kit. So that is why I'd have Cody Taylor as rested here, getting ready to go for the November Internationals. Basilio Tosi with the injury of Fletcher Noor, it does make it a little bit easier that we only really have two choices, Tyrell Lomax or Tosi. But I would give Basilio Tosi a lot of minutes here up against the Wallabies, mainly because we only ever see him coming off the bench. And last game, we only saw him coming off the bench for a pretty brief amount of time. So more minutes here would be a very handy thing. Moving on to the locking Joe. Number four, this is where I've got Patrick Tuipolotu. Number five, Sam Derry. So I've taken Scott Barrett out of the starting side. Instead, I would like to see him coming off the bench for this game, just to add a bit more experience and hopefully be able to fix that last 20 minutes for the All Blacks. I feel like it would be a fantastic test for his captaincy because they always talk about a captain leading from the front and perhaps if you had Barrett out there for the last 20 minutes while he is fresh, he should be able to show the team exactly what they need to do to keep that momentum flowing and show the team how to score points throughout that last quarter of the match. So it is something that I don't think we'd see Scott Robertson do. I do believe that Tui Pilotu needs some minutes under his belt though after his injury. Meant that we didn't really see a huge amount of him. Played for Auckland in the Bunnings NBC. He partners with Sam Derry throughout Super Rugby Pacific. So I think it would be a perfect combination to use here up against the Wallabies. But now we move on to the loose forward trio. This is where once again I've gone with some massive changes. Number six, I have got Ethan Black at it. But if he is injured, I would change that and instead have Summer Penny Fee now. Now you'd be wondering, where is Wallace Satiti? Well, he's at number eight for me in this contest. And number seven, I've gone Adi Savia. Now, with Wallace Satiti in the form that he is, it makes it very easy, in my opinion, to start making that switch. And that is moving Savia to seven, even though I know they don't want to do it. And I'm not even sure Savia wants to be a 7 anymore. But with the current selection of players that they've got, it opens up a lot more opportunities. Now, you could also argue they could continue using Satiti as a number 6. And then you put someone like an Ethan Black at a, in that number 7 jersey. Or perhaps even go with that experience of Sam Kane. But just for this game in particular, I would love to see how it would work if you were to have Artie Savia 7 and then give Wallace Satiti that role of the enforcer off the back of a scrum. He's a physical individual. He loves getting his hands on the ball. And I feel like something the All Blacks have been lacking for quite some time is a ball running seven. In Sam Kane's last three performances, I don't even believe he's had 15 metres carried combined. And that is really not going to threaten any defensive line if you're only making one or two metres per carry. Yes, he does a lot of work in the breakdown, but that is something that I believe Savia could do if he was at seven. And then you give Satiti that chance as the number eight. But moving on to the back line now. For myself in this game, I would be going with Cortez Aratama as the starting nine. Now, the easy option at number 10 is Damian McKenzie. Yes, he's had some poor moments throughout the rugby championship, but at the same time, if he is the 10 that they are going with moving forward, it would only make perfect sense to have him in that number 10 jersey. But this is actually where I've made a switch and I've gone to Harry Plummer 
Now, a lot of people think that Bowden Barrett will be the starting 10 for this matchup, and that is a big possibility. Perhaps we see Barrett at 10, and we see Will Jordan take on that number 15 jersey. But in this contest, it's going to sound harsh, but Harry Plummer, he wasn't initially selected in the squad. He was brought in as injury cover. So I don't believe Scott Robertson at the moment has a huge amount of plans for that man, which is why there's a high chance that he doesn't start in this game up against Australia. But in this case for the All Blacks, I think they should use this as a Harry Plummer trial match. Give him the opportunity at 10 and say to him, prove to us why you should be in the squad going into the November internationals. Because if they're not giving Plummer minutes here, I don't think he will even be in the squad in November which is a massive shame because I believe he should have been announced in the original July international squad that the All Blacks went with. So for Plummer, I think you give him the chance here. You say, make a name for yourself. And if you play well, you're in our squad. But then the problem that you've got is it's one game. And unfortunately, unless you're going to give him some consistent minutes, it makes it very hard for a player to find his best form in just one performance. So Harry Plummer, there would be a lot of pressure on him in that number 10 jersey. If he was given the shot, I just don't know if Razor is going to do it. But I hope he does and gives Plummer the crack as the starting fly half. Moving into the centres, we saw the injury of Geordie Barrett, which I think has actually made it more likely that Scott Robertson might stick with a very similar back line in this contest, only because if Geordie Barrett's going to be out for the November internationals, you want to have already started that chemistry of the likes of Ratama, McKenzie, Leonard Brown, Rico Iwani, they might even go with at number 13. But for myself, I've gone Anton, Leonard Brown, number 12, and Billy Proctor, number 13. The forgotten man of Scott Robertson's side. The only international game that he's had was up against the Fijians, and to his credit, he had a very strong contest throughout that match. Almost 100 metres made, four clean breaks. He didn't really put a foot wrong throughout that contest, but they have persisted with Rico Ioane throughout every single other game of the Rugby Championship. And when it's not Ioane, it's Anton Leonard-Brown playing 13 rather than where I believe he should be playing, which is that number 12 jersey. So I would give Billy Proctor the chance here to show everyone exactly what he can do. If he doesn't get minutes here, I just don't know when they're going to try and play him. Maybe up against Japan in the warm-up game of the November Internationals. But other than that, if they're not willing to back him in games up against Australia, I don't think they're willing to back him in matches up against the Irish, English or the French, which are all matches coming up for the All Blacks in November. But moving on to the back three, this is where I wouldn't really have too many changes from what they were initially going to be having for the Bledisloe Cup. Match number one, so Caleb Clark at number 11, number 14, Will Jordan, and then number 15, Bowden Barrett. Now, like I said, Bowden Barrett has been rumoured that he might be playing 10 for this contest, which would still be a very decent option. Maybe you have McKenzie coming off the bench, and then at number 15, Will Jordan gets himself some more minutes. But I don't think the concern is that 15 jersey. I think it's that right wing jersey. Whether or not you go with Sever Reese, who, yes, had a decent game last week up against the Wallabies, but the games prior to that, he has still been extremely out of form. You've got Mark Talia, who you could transition to that right wing. Maybe you could even go Billy Proctor, I guess, out on that right wing. In fact, if that was the only way to get Billy Proctor into the side, that is what I would do. I would have Will Jordan 15, Bowden Barrett 10, and give Proctor some minutes out on the wing doesn't really play there a whole heap, but if it means he gets the chance, maybe it would be worth it. But I think that in this situation, we're learning exactly why the All Blacks needed someone like an Amoni Narawa to play out on that right wing. He was in the initial squad that was named and then was taken out for the Rugby Championship competition. But nonetheless, that is my All Blacks starting XV. I don't think this is anywhere near what they will select. We've got two options that we will see from Razor. It will either be extremely conservative, similar to last week with just a couple changes due to injuries. So if that is the case, we would see probably Anton Leonard Brown go into 12. We would see Jordan possibly bump back out onto that right wing and then Bowden Barrett at 15. Or the other option is he goes experimental, gives the young guys a chance like we saw up against the Fijians. At the end of the day, the rugby championship is pretty much over. The best New Zealand can do is second. But the fact that they are currently third and need a big win here to get to second, 
it does make it a little bit trickier to know what Scott Robertson will be going with. But he is announcing his side tomorrow. We will be making the video as soon as the lineup is announced. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Do let me know your All Blacks XP in the comments down below. And if you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. But thank you all very much for tuning in. And I will see you all for the next one.